Hi, welcome to Quietly Marketing, and today's episode is Market Like Big Ben. Not the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback, I am talking about the clock tower in London, England. Uh, You may know it as essentially every single establishing shot in a movie to let you know that you're in England, Um, or as the thing that gets destroyed if a movie is based in London and it's an action disaster movie and you need to know the movie is serious. Essentially the same as uh, the Statue of Liberty or the White House getting destroyed in London and Big Ben has to get destroyed or the situation is not serious. So, um, Big Ben's marketing. Um, I'm not actually talking about marketing around tourism for people to come to London um, to see Big Ben. I'm actually talking about Big Ben itself. Now, just a little thing since I am English, I do have to establish that when you actually say Big Ben, you're not referring to what you think of as Big Ben as the clock tower. That's actually the clock tower. Big Ben is actually the bell inside of the clock tower. That's what's actually called Big Ben. It's a little nitpicky thing maybe for my heritage here that I just have to bring up quickly. But either way, when I say Big Ben, I'll still be referring to the clock tower in this case because that's what's established. Um, Big Ben is not something you'd imagine that would be established in social media. One, because it's not actually a person or anything, it is just an animate object. We've come used to certain things, um, having fake Twitter accounts, that's exactly what this is. It's not like an official Twitter account, but um, I just thought it was, ho- I just, I just had to talk about it today. Um, now, Big Ben is not something that you see a lot on Facebook outside of tourism. It's not on LinkedIn, but it does actually have a really fun Twitter account. So you think, what is Big Ben talking about on Twitter? Okay, if you go by a lot of um, brands today that like to talk about just everything under the sun, everything to try and be relevant, everything to um, you know insert itself into every conversation possible, no matter how irrelevant, it just does what it would do if it actually was on Twitter. And here it is. It goes, at 1 o'clock, it tweets, bong. At 2 o'clock, it tweets, bong, bong. At 3 o'clock, it tweets, bong, bong, bong. It's hilarious. (laughs) It has 484,000 followers. um, And I've heard it come up uh, quite a bit in conversation, especially some of my friends I still have in England, about how funny this account really is. Now, it's certainly just a funny piece of trivia. It's funny to go look at it. It's funny to follow it. It gets kind of old quickly, obviously, because it just does the exact same thing till it gets to 12 long and then goes back down to one. Um, but it's very, very consistent um, and it keeps tweeting all the time. But what is very um, important to realize here is if Big Ben really did have a Twitter account, this is what it would tweet, all right? It is a clock tower that is designed to tell the time. So if it did have a Twitter account, this is all it would do, okay? So try when you create your own Twitter account, when you create your own Facebook account, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Pinterest, whatever it is, stick to what you know and only tweet really about what you know about your products and how it's related to something that your audience would be interested in, okay? Don't try and insert yourself into every conversation possible, okay? It's... You know, it's not like turning up into a uh, into a party and just inserting yourself in a conversation you weren't a part of. Try and actually do something that is related to your audience and that they care about. Um, I must say that a thousand times on every single episode of this, but it is that important. So let's go down a couple lessons here. Um, I don't want to be too long on this subject, but um, um, one is you don't have to be everywhere, okay? Maybe I would argue that Big Ben doesn't really need to be anywhere, <laughs> but... You don't have to be everywhere. Look at all these social media accounts out there, okay? Look at, I just went through a list of them there. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Pinterest, and there's a new one coming out every single day. And every single month, there's a new established one that you need to be a part of. You don't need to be a part of it. If it's not relevant to your audience, if it's not relevant to the content that you can create and talk about, please don't waste your time on it. It might not hurt your business in the sense that it might be fun. You might get a few followers from it. People might think it's funny, the interactions that you have on it if you do it in an interesting way. But is it really, is it taking time away from other things you could be doing? What if it, you know, most of your audience is on LinkedIn if you're talking about a B2B, um, if you're talking about a B2B business, maybe you should just put all your time into LinkedIn. Yeah, you can get some traction on some other social channels, but if most of it's on LinkedIn, why don't you just stick to owning that? And, you know, doing that, that's, um, you know, look at the Content Inc. model by Joe Polizzi. He establishes this as own one channel, own one message before you ever go into something else. Okay, don't think that you have to be everywhere. Now, here's the thing. If you decide that you do want to be everywhere or you want to be in multiple channels, 
make sure that you're, it fits in with your brand and with your audience. Just to reiterate this again, think of the Big Ben thing. What did it tweet? It's tweeting the time. That's all that it's supposed to do. That's all your brand should be doing is talking about what's important to your audience. Not about your product necessarily, but about things that are relevant to your product, related to your industry, related to your audience's interests. So if you have to be in multiple channels and you really want to open up that Snapchat account because you think I just have to be on that, well, find something unique about being on that and kind of exploit that area of your business. Create that one unique element and then just exploit that. Something fun, something interesting, something new, just put a new twist on it. Um, think about like when people go to conferences and everyone writes a, writes a summary at the end of it. It all just becomes white noise. Take a different spin on it. Do something different um, with a post. Um, people love to, let's take Labor Day's coming up soon. And I know, take just take some of your favorite brands and go in there and they're going to be tweeting out things like Happy Labor Day. Um, or something related to Labor Day followed by XXX. Think of my product when it comes to it. Um, so keeping your jewelry safe on... Um, over your Labor Day holiday or something like that. Is it relevant? Kind of. Is it a complete waste of time and white noise given how many people are going to be talking about it? Absolutely. Remember, it can hurt your business, it can hurt your time if you're just spending it on irrelevant things that don't matter, they're just a waste of it, and you could be spending that time somewhere else. Okay, so if you're going to, do you really have to tweet Happy Labor Day? Do you, what, do you think people are going to be upset if you don't mention that or insert yourself into every social um, issue that's currently going on right now? If you're a big brand, you might be feel responsible to do that and that's fine. But just really take your time, sit back and think, is this actually relevant? Is this worthwhile my time to be in this channel, to write about this message or to write about this topic? Okay, and this goes back to um, my second point here. You know, one was you don't have to be everywhere and two is keep to what you know you know not everything is a sales opportunity not every situation not every holiday not every um, social situation not every message not every channel is necessarily a direct sales strategy okay only go into it if it makes sense for you and for your audience now here's a really um a way i want to try to establish this um I was listening to a interview with Sylvester Stallone a little while ago when he was talking about Expendables and the third one was coming out. And he made the Expendables and it's a ridiculous over the top action movie. It's a lot of fun. And during it, you know, Jimmy Fallon starts asking, so why are you doing this? And he goes, well, you gotta, you gotta do what you do best. And what he does best is action movies. What everyone, most of the people in those movies do best is action movies. They didn't try to um, um, go too far, go out of their element. Um, that's what they do best. Sure, they do other movie projects, but this is what they do best. That's what people know them for. So that's what they've decided to like craft those movies on. It's just making the best possible version of that. Um, so think of Stressor Sloan. Try and act that when you are going into any new channel, any new medium, any content you're creating. Do what you do best, all right? And if you need some support, some help to do something else best, then start recruiting. Get some other people in there. Get some guest posts, some ghost bloggers who do what they do best and can relate it to your business. Um, and finally, one other thing, if you ever want an example of a, uh, a company that does things really well, if you ever get a chance, take a look at Taco Bell. The very, very, uh, most of the time, every single thing they tweet is relevant to their audience. It's very in keeping with their brand, in keeping with their tone. They cut constant messages about um, a taco shirt that they were getting out there. It's just as ridiculous as the food that they create, but it's in keeping with their brand, it's keeping with their product. Um, so that's a great channel that really kind of doesn't feel like it needs to insert itself in every situation and really holds true to its own brand. Okay, so in summation, whenever you're deciding if you wanna get into a new channel, anything you're deciding your tweet or any kind of social strategy, try and think like Big Ben and try and market like Big Ben. All right, thank you, and I will talk to you again next week.